Hi. Welcome to Discovery Quests. I hope you all are doing great today. A movement that began in America in the 1960s, aimed at making archaeology more scientific, with explicit theory and rigorous methodologies. At the heart of the thinking was a positivist belief in the principles of the scientific method especially hypothesis testing, or hypothetico-deductive reasoning. Archaeology is the study of past human societies through the examination of physical remains and artifacts. It helps us uncover ancient cultures, technologies, and lifestyles that predate written records, contributing to our understanding of history by revealing the secrets of the past. Number 13 The Remarkable Tomb of High Priest Wa Tai Egyptian archaeologists have made a remarkable discovery, unearthing the tomb of a high priest named Watai dating back more than 4,400 years in the Saqqara necropolis, located south of Cairo. This private tomb, decorated with hieroglyphs and colorful statues, offers a unique glimpse into the 5th dynasty of Egypt during the reign of King Nefer Ker Kakai. The tomb features scenes depicting the priest alongside his family members. It contains more than a dozen niches and 24 vibrant statues, all remarkably well preserved. The tomb itself measures 33 feet, 10 meters, in length, 9.8 feet, 3 meters in width, and boasts walls almost 3 meters high adorned with hieroglyphs and statues of pharaohs. What makes this discovery particularly exceptional is that the tomb remains untouched and unlooted, making it a rare find in recent decades. Archaeologists believe there is much more to uncover, as five sealed shafts were discovered inside the tomb, raising expectations for additional revelations. This discovery contributes significantly to our understanding of Egypt's fifth dynasty, a period that followed the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza. The tomb's impeccable condition, and the unique type of statues found within suggest its importance in shedding light on this ancient era. Egyptian authorities are hopeful that these findings will boost Egypt's tourism sector, which has faced challenges since the 2011 political upheaval. Overall, the tomb of Watai offers a unique window into Egypt's ancient past, showcasing the artistic and cultural achievements of the 5th dynasty while highlighting the ongoing archaeological efforts in the region, which continue to unveil the mysteries of Egypt's history. Number 12-2 300-year-old bronze statues from the Etruscan Roman transition period. 24 bronze statues were uncovered in Tuscany by archaeologists, from the Università Pestanieri di Siena. The statues have been dated to around 2. 300 years ago and were perfectly preserved by suspension in geothermal pools and mud. This find is regarded as the most significant since 1972 as it rewrites the assimilation of Etruscans in the Roman expansion period. The statues depict Hegia and other Greco-Roman mythological divinities thus suggesting that the Great Bath, Sanctuary of San Castiano was a unique multicultural and multilingual haven of peace, surrounded by political instability and war, last year. Archaeologists made a stunning discovery while excavating ancient thermal baths in Tuscany, a trove of two dozen pristine bronze statues, preserved in boiling water and mud, dating to between the 2nd century BCE and the 1st century CE. Now, for the first time, the statues, and thousands of coins found alongside them, are on display in a new exhibition at the Quirinal Palace in Rome. Titled The God's Return, the show spotlights the history of the bronzes and the groups that inhabited the area. The two, 300-year-old statues date to a period of transition from Etruscan to Roman rule. Tabley told Answer that the absolutely unique discovery sheds new light on the relationship between the two groups. Historians are still piecing together the origins of the ancient Etruscans, who controlled much of Italy before the Romans. As the Romans came to power, and for many centuries after, Etruscan culture continued to exert a heavy influence on the Roman way of life. The amazingly preserved statues, feature inscriptions in both Etruscan and Latin, chronicling the stories of some of the visitors to the baths, which were believed to improve visitors' health. The trove of statues includes a depiction of Hygiea, the goddess of health, 
alongside Apollo and other Greco-Roman gods. Seven queens of the Nile exhibition at Rijksmuseum van Oudheden in the Netherlands. The Queens of the Nile exhibition at the Rijksmuseum van Oudheden in the Netherlands is a captivating journey into the world of ancient Egypt's powerful and influential female rulers. This extraordinary exhibition showcases the lives and legacies of some of Egypt's most iconic queens, such as Cleopatra and Nefertiti, who left an indelible mark on history. One of the exhibition's most striking features is its comprehensive collection of artifacts and relics from the time of these queens. Visitors can marvel at exquisite jewelry, statues, pottery, and other objects that once belonged to these formidable women. These artifacts provide valuable insights into the queen's roles, lifestyles, and the opulence of their courts, offering a glimpse into the splendor of ancient Egypt. Queens of the Nile not only celebrates the Queen's historical significance but also highlights the ongoing research and discoveries in Egyptology. It showcases the collaborative efforts of archaeologists, historians, and curators who continue to uncover the secrets of Egypt's past. The exhibition encourages a sense of wonder and curiosity about ancient civilizations and the enduring allure of Egypt's queens. In conclusion, Queens of the Nile at the Rijksmuseum van Oudheden is a must-visit exhibition that offers a captivating journey into the lives and legacies of ancient Egypt's remarkable queens. Through a rich collection of artifacts, immersive experiences, and insightful narratives, it brings these queens out of the shadows of history and into the spotlight. This exhibition is a testament to the enduring fascination with Egypt's queens and their enduring impact on our world. Number 10 Wreck of Sir Ernest Shackleton's Endurance Found The Endurance was a three-masted barkentine, dispatched on the Imperial Trans-Antarctic Expedition to make the first land crossing of the Antarctic continent. The ship became beset in ice whilst navigating the Weddell Sea, drifting in an ice pack until it was eventually crushed and sank. Shackleton and the crew were stranded on the ice in makeshift camps, eventually using lifeboats to reach the uninhabited Elephant Island. Shackleton and five others then made an 800-mile open boat journey in the James Care to reach South Georgia. From there, Shackleton was eventually able to mount a rescue of the men waiting on Elephant Island and bring them home. In 1921, Shackleton returned to the Antarctic with the Shackleton Rowett Expedition, but died of a heart attack while his ship was moored in South Georgia. The discovery was made at 1,605 hours GMT on the 5th of March in 3,008 meters of water, 100 years to the day after Shackleton was buried on South Georgia. The ship is sitting upright on the seabed and is largely intact. There is some damage to the focal deck and part of her starboard side, but the paintwork and her name endurance are still clearly visible. Most remarkably is the ship's wheel, which underwater imagery has revealed is in perfect condition on the ship's well deck at the stern. Mention Bound, Director of Exploration at Endurance 22 said, The search for the Endurance was ten years in the making. It was one of the most ambitious archaeological undertakings ever. It was also a huge international team effort that demonstrates what can be achieved when people work together. Number 9 Lost Temples, Buddhist Structures Forest. Dot the team were exploring the region for the first time since 1938, focusing their survey over an area of 170 square kilometers, that included parts of the closed-off Bandhavkra Tiger Reserve to protect the biodiversity and Bengal tiger populations. The survey area is being carried out in three phases, the first of which was completed in the Tala Range in May to June 2022. In the next two phases, the Kitali and Magadi ranges of the Tiger Reserve will be explored. The survey revealed caves and temples. Remains of Buddhist structures and mural inscriptions bearing names of cities such as Mathura and Kaushambi in old scripts written in Brahmi, Shankarlipi, and Nagari. The most startling finding is the remains of the Buddhist structures in the region where a Hindu dynasty ruled. It suggests religious harmony, but who built these Buddhist structures is not yet known, said an RC official. Twenty-four inscriptions have been documented which date from the 2nd to 5th century AD, 
with some also describing the names of Pavata, Vejabharada, and Sepatanerika. Inscriptions also name important kings, such as Maharaja Sri Bhimsena, Maharaja Potesiri, and Maharaja Bhattadeva. 26 caves have been documented which date to the 2nd century BC to the 5th century AD, 26 temples, 2 monasteries, 2 votive stupas and 46 sculptures. The team also found the remains of chaitya-shaped doors and cells containing stone beds which were likely constructed by people who worshipped the Mahayana sect of Buddhism. Some of the smaller finds are board games found in the caves, a monolith depicting the ten avatars of Vishnu, a votive stupa, two siva math belonging to the Kalashuri period and coins belonging to Mughal era, and Shaki dynasty of Jaunpur Sultanate. Number 8 Findings from the Antikythera Shipwreck The second period, May the 23rd to June the 15th, 2022, of the underwater archaeological research on the Antikythera Shipwreck, within the five-year program 2021 to 2025, was successfully completed, linking the contemporary research to the iconic diving operations of 1900 to 1901 the marble head of a male bearded figure. Bigger than life size, which at first sight can be identified with Heracles, Hercules, of the so-called Farnese type. It most probably belongs to the headless statue of the so-called Heracles of Antikythera, INV. Number 5742 of the National Archaeological Museum, which was retrieved by sponge divers in 1900. The marble head of a larger-than-life-size male bearded figure, bearing a striking resemblance to the iconic Heracles, Hercules, of the Farnese type, is a remarkable archaeological discovery. This artifact is believed to be part of the statue known as the Heracles of Antikythera, which was catalogued as INV. Number 5742 in the National Archaeological Museum. The statue was famously retrieved from the depths of the sea by sponge divers in the year 1900, adding to the rich maritime history of the Antikythera region. The head's imposing size and distinctive features immediately associated with the legendary Heracles, a figure of great importance in Greek mythology. Heracles, renowned for his incredible strength and heroism, is often depicted in art and sculpture, the Farnese type of Heracles is a widely recognized representation, characterized by his robust and muscular physique, as well as his distinctive beard. The significance of this discovery lies in its potential to reunite the marble head with the body of the Heracles statue from which it originated. The headless statue, initially found in the submerged wreckage off the coast of Antikythera, has long been a subject of fascination and study. Researchers have sought to uncover the mysteries surrounding this ancient sculpture and its connection to Greek mythology. Number 7 The Lost City of Pompeii After a devastating volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, Pompeii, an ancient Roman city, was buried under ash and pumice. The eruption destroyed the city and killed its inhabitants, a tragic story but one that left us with a vast archaeological site and a hoard of Roman treasure. Buried under ash means no air and moisture, so buildings, objects and cadavers have stayed well preserved for thousands of years. A great deal of our knowledge of everyday life in a Roman city is owed to the very existence of Pompeii. Pompeii, a once thriving Roman city near modern-day Naples, Italy is renowned for its tragic yet remarkable history. In 79 AD, the catastrophic eruption of Mount Vesuvius buried the city under a thick layer of volcanic ash and pumice. Forgotten for centuries, it was rediscovered in the 18th century, revealing exceptional preservation. Ongoing archaeological excavations have unveiled Pompeii's well-planned streets, houses, public buildings, and awe-inspiring artwork, such as frescoes adorning walls. The Villa of the Mysteries, with its enigmatic, cult-related frescoes, is a notable highlight. Pompeii also holds a poignant record of its inhabitants' final moments, as plaster casts reveal their poses and clothing. Today, it captivates millions of tourists, serving as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and an unparalleled window into ancient Roman life and civilization. 6. Ancient City, Zikiku found in Iraq. 
A Bronze Age city settlement has been uncovered after the Tigris River receded due to extreme drought. The city, Zikiku, has been dated 3,400 years old and has been completed with a palace and fort. Researchers believe that the settlement held an important role in connecting the core region of the Mitanni Empire which existed from 1550 to 1350 BC in present-day northeastern Syria. This city was likely destroyed by an earthquake around 1350 BC which caused the upper parts of the walls to bury and preserve surviving buildings. A team of German and Kurdish archaeologists have uncovered a 3,400-year-old Mitanni Empire-era city once located on the Tigris River. The settlement emerged from the waters of the Mosul Reservoir early this year as water levels fell rapidly due to extreme drought in Iraq. The extensive city with a palace and several large buildings could be ancient Zikiku, believed to have been an important center in the Mitanni Empire, ca. 1550 to 1350 BC. Iraq is one of the countries in the world most affected by climate change. The south of the country in particular has been suffering from extreme drought for months. To prevent crops from drying out, large amounts of water have been drawn down from the Mosul Reservoir, Iraq's most important water storage, since December. This led to the reappearance of a Bronze Age city that had been submerged decades ago without any prior archaeological investigations. It is located at Kemyun in the Kurdistan region of Iraq. Richard III's grave. Richard III, the last Plantagenet King of England, has long been portrayed as a villainous figure in English history and folklore. His reputation was marred by accusations of prince killing, his physical deformity, scoliosis, and his perceived ruthless pursuit of power. Despite this notoriety, the location of his burial site remained a mystery for centuries, adding an air of intrigue to his legacy. In 2012, the Looking for Richard project, conducted in collaboration with the University of Leicester's Archaeological Services, embarked on a quest to uncover the truth about Richard III's resting place. The team focused their efforts on the site of the former Greyfriars Friary Church in Leicester, where historical records suggested he might have been interred. Remarkably, the project yielded a significant breakthrough when human remains were unearthed at the site. These remains underwent extensive testing, including DNA analysis and radiocarbon dating, which conclusively confirmed that they belonged to Richard III. This discovery made headlines worldwide and captured the public's imagination, shedding new light on the life and death of this enigmatic historical figure. The identification of Richard III's remains marked a pivotal moment in English history and archaeology, dispelling some myths while also sparking fresh debates and discussions about his true character and the events surrounding his tumultuous reign. It serves as a testament to the power of modern science and research in unraveling age-old mysteries and providing a more nuanced understanding of the past. Number 4 Cave of Altamira the Cave of Altamira is a captivating testament to the intersection of archaeology and anthropology, offering a poignant narrative that reshapes our understanding of human history. Nestled in Spain, this cave holds an invaluable treasure, prehistoric paintings that depict both mammals and human hands. Its significance lies not only in the ancient artwork but also in its pivotal role in the evolution of archaeological knowledge. The cave's historical importance cannot be overstated, as its discovery in 1880 marked a groundbreaking moment in the realm of archaeology. Prior to this find, the prevailing belief was that prehistoric humans lacked the cognitive capacity for artistic expression. However, Altamira's prehistoric paintings challenged this notion, unraveling a new dimension of our distant ancestors' capabilities. These awe-inspiring artifacts date back an astonishing 14,000 to 20,000 years ago, transporting us across millennia to gain insight into the lives and minds of our ancient forebears. The vivid imagery of animals and human hands adorning the cave's walls provides a unique window into the thoughts, experiences, and creative impulses of those who inhabited this world long before recorded history. Altamira's remarkable story continues to inspire both archaeologists and anthropologists, serving as a bridge connecting the past with the present. 
It reminds us of the ceaseless quest to unravel the mysteries of our human heritage and underscores the resilience of the human spirit, which has been driven to create and express itself across time, even in the darkest and most remote corners of our shared history. Number 3 Ancient Royal Tomb Found in Luxor The recently unearthed ancient tomb, dating back to 1550 BC, stands as a captivating relic from the illustrious 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt. Nestled within its sacred confines, the tomb whispers the enigmatic tale of a princess or perhaps a revered royal wife from a bygone era. The meticulous scrutiny of archaeologists has yielded compelling insights, suggesting that this tomb's construction can be attributed to the regency of the formidable pair, Hatshepsut and Tutmos III. Though the identity of the tomb's occupant remains veiled in historical obscurity, the surviving remnants within this sepulchre offer tantalizing clues. The tomb's lavish decorations, adorned with meticulous artistry, and its imposing size bear witness to the high status and prestige of the individual it was built to house. This was, undoubtedly, the final resting place of someone of immense significance, a great royal wife and possibly her cherished progeny, all hailing from the lineage of a Thutmosid king. As we stand in reverence before this ancient sepulchre, we are transported across the chasm of time to an era of opulence and grandeur. The tomb whispers secrets of a royal lineage, and a society that revered its noble women. It beckons us to unravel the mysteries that shroud its occupant, inspiring us to delve deeper into the annals of history to unearth the identity and legacy of this illustrious figure. In the heart of ancient Egypt, where pharaohs and queens once held court, this tomb now stands as a testament to the enduring allure of the past and the unquenchable thirst of humanity to illuminate the shadows of antiquity. Two ancient Han dynasty tombs found in China, in a remarkable discovery, a cluster of 21 ancient tombs has emerged from the mists of time, nestled 1,000 kilometers away from the bustling metropolis of Shanghai. These funereal relics, dating back a staggering 2,000 years to the hallowed era of the Han Dynasty, have unveiled their secrets to modern archaeologists. With a tantalizing aura of regality, those laid to rest within these tombs are presumed to have possessed royal lineage. A hypothesis fervently embraced by researchers from the Institute of Archaeology of the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and the Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology of Hunan Province. What lends credence to this theory is the astonishing treasure trove of artifacts interred alongside the departed souls. These tombs, an eloquent testimony to the reverence accorded to their occupants, were meticulously arranged in various configurations. Many stood in solemn companionship, side by side, while others formed a stately row of three, and a majestic quartet were lined up in unison. As the centuries peel away, revealing these silent witnesses to history, we are beckoned to venture deeper into the recesses of the past. These 21 tombs, resplendent in their mystery, invite us to contemplate the lives and loves of those who once graced the courts of the Han Dynasty. In their discovery, we find not only a link to our shared human heritage but also the enduring power of love, which transcends even the sands of time. Number 1 Ginisthoi Ginisthoi, the Greek word that is believed to be the only surviving handwritten signature of the legendary Queen Cleopatra of Egypt. A single Greek word, Ginisthoi, meaning to do as I command in free translation, written at the bottom of a Ptolemaic papyrus, may have been written by the Egyptian Queen Cleopatra VII herself, claims the Dutch papyrologist Peter van Minen from the University of Groningen. The text was sent to Alexandria on the 26th of the 6th ancient Egyptian, Coptic month of Maya, also known as Amza, 23rd of February 33 BC, and later appears to have been reused in order to be made a cartoonage mummy case, as found by a German mission at Abusir in 1904. It is about a royal ordinance granting tax exemption, and financial reliefs to a Roman officer named Publius Canidius, an ally of Marcus Antonius, who would command his land army during the Battle of Actio, Actium, in 31 BC. First of all, it is worth mentioning that Cleopatra makes a grammatical mistake here, 
which was common for her time. She added iota, Greek letter iota comma to the medial passive genesto and made it genesto i, out of it. This was very common and made under the influence of the singular dative of the second declension that had i, but the iota was not read by that time. People often added the iota to other forms that originally didn't have it, like future or subjunctive, for example, aorist subjunctive graps. That's it for today. We will meet with another interesting topic very soon.